Got it. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to yet another Poetry Month event, okay? For those who are new here, I'm Professor Bridget, uh, myself, along with Professor Diane Arieff, and our wonderful librarian and the brainchild behind this entire thing, Rosanna Cruz, we've been bringing you all some poetry programming all month long. We had uh, some really great workshops, okay, on writing poetry, on reading poetry out loud, and we are culminating that series of events right now at the end of Poetry Month with this drop the mic poetry extravaganza, okay? I wish I had some sound effects, like some burp, 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 burp. I wish I had some of those things, confetti falling from the ceiling. Imagine that's happening while you all hear me talking, okay? We have had such a great time with you all, writing poetry, reading poetry out loud, sharing our stories, talking about what writing poetry feels like to us and all that business. So today, we're gonna hear you kind of, you know, show off, okay? Think of it as like a, a little, a moment to say, hey, I do this. And for my folks who are new here, welcome. So glad to see you. Thank you for joining us. I really look forward to hearing your poetry. I look forward to hearing you snap and clap and give shout outs in the chat to folks that you hear and really be supportive. So before I go forward, I'm going to let Roxana introduce herself and then we're going to get into the rules of the open mic. Okay, Roxana, hit it. All right. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Thank you for being here today. I'm so excited that we're wrapping up, but also sad about it. But I'm really looking forward to seeing um, all the work that you've been working on this past month or, um, you know, the year long, if you're all like uh, active poets. Um, this is my first time participating. Um, I have an appreciation for poetry and a deeper appreciation after this workshop series. So thank you all for sticking around this whole month and welcome newcomers. And I'm excited to hear more about um, your work, um, your words, and um, hopefully we can do this again next year. So nice meeting everybody and seeing everybody here today. Yes. And we even had Roxana writing poetry last week. Y'all remember? Mm hmm. So maybe she'll share that poem with us this week. Mm-hmm, maybe a surprise, okay. So I'll talk a little bit about myself when it comes to poetry. So I am a professor here at Santa Monica College, Professor Bridget in the English department. I teach poetry, I teach composition, I teach literature, I teach Afro-American, I teach whatever they put in front of me, pretty much. I, I do whatever they want me to do. I'll teach math. They got If they need me over there, I'll pop over. Just give me a book and give me a calculator and I'll get right to it. And when Roxana brought this idea to us to do these poetry events, we were so excited because obviously teaching creative writing in a class over 15 weeks is a lot of fun. We really enjoy it. But we like these kind of moments for people to be able to jump in from the community, faculty, staff, and get a chance to share. So this event is really important to us just for these purposes. So if you've liked these events so far and they felt good, you know, we might send out a survey a little bit later and ask you for your opinion and tips and things like that and make sure we can get more folks out here right welcome alicia first time here we're happy to have you anyway as we get going okay first thing first is open format all right and i think i might be lagging a little bit but let's see if i catch up i think i'm catching up yes okay so <laughs> so this is an open mic format which means the mic is open so if you would like to share poetry we love it you want to sing a song hey I'll take it, all right? Um, a little quick note about your day, a little short you know, narrative, that's okay too. The goal here though, is to make sure that we leave space on the mic for everyone to get a chance to share. So if you have more than one piece to share or something that's a little bit longer, just sign up twice, okay? And come back around again, okay? Just make sure that we have time for everybody. We wanna give people around two to three minutes a piece during the open mic portion. You don't have to go to three minutes. You know, it's it's up to you, but two to three minutes at least, you know, a, a, a minimum maximum there for us. That way we have time for everybody. If you're someone who's never timed yourself before, let's give it one piece and then come back around again, okay? And we'll get used to that and, and things like that. So the way I was hoping we could sign up and Roxana, let me know if this is okay with you. Since we're a small group today, you can just pop into the chat and let us know. You can either uh, message Roxana directly or pop in the chat and say, hey, I'd like to go. And then she'll let me know who's ready and I'll call you up to the stage, okay? The virtual stage, all right? Um, so here are some just kind of house rules to live by. We wanna make sure that we're being completely respectful as people share their work. We are all so lovely here on camera, looking so adorable, first of all, okay? These great poets are a beautiful group, I have to say. So while you're on camera, make sure you're giving your feedback. You know, you can give physical feedback. You can move your hands. You can do ASL applause, okay? You can do your snaps. You can clap. You can cheer. You can, you know, 
dance, something that the person who's reading and sharing can see you giving them that visual feedback. If we were in a large auditorium or even in a small cafe, they'd hear you snapping and clapping and all that stuff. And they know that you love what you're hearing. You can also, if you're not someone who's on camera or if you're not really big on physical displays, you can pop into the chat and say, oh, I love this. You can put a heart up as an emoji, right? Just some way to offer feedback. Wanna make sure that we're encouraging our peers here to continue to share, all right? Uh, if you have to go off camera, that's completely okay, but we love seeing you, we really do, all right? We ask that while someone is sharing that if you are not the person sharing that you stay off mic, that way we don't get any feedback or anything kind of weird happening to the sound. I'll also mute myself, okay? Once you get to about three minutes, I will likely give a little note in the chat like, hey, you know, getting up on three minutes here, give you a chance to go ahead and end your poem and, and bring it back around. But don't worry, if you go over by a couple of seconds or whatever the case is, we're not, you know, there's no stopwatch over here, right? The poem could be getting that good to me. I might forget that you're going over three minutes. You might be at minute 10 and I'm excited, okay, to hear you. Uh, but again, please make sure you're popping into the chat saying, hey, I'd like to go. Uh, and then we'll grab you from the chat. Okay, um, with all that said, this is no workshop setting, so you don't necessarily have to give feedback in an immediate sense, but if you want to say, oh, I love that line, that sounded so great in the chat, please do, people love to hear that, I know I love to hear that, okay, so please make sure you are being respectful in the chat. All right, I think that's all I have to say for now, because I have the extreme pleasure, the honor of welcoming a guest to our poetry soiree, okay, one of my good, good poetry homies, James Coates. Let me go ahead and read you this beautiful bio that we have here for James. He's here in the center of my screen. I'm not sure if he is for you in the Brady Bunch of the screen. He's in the center, I think it's poetic. James Coates is a multidisciplinary artist, author, educator, born in Los Angeles and raised in the Inland Empire. He received his BFA from Cal Poly Pomona and his MBA from Cal State San Bernardino. As a creative change agent, he believes the arts can inspire the youth and influence positive change in the world. His first poetry collection, If I Had Lived, was published in 2018. He is the winner of the 2021 San Gabriel Poetry Slam. In 2021, he founded the organization Lift Our Voices Education, which hosts an award-winning workshop monthly called Be the Change Social Justice Writing Workshop. He became the artist in resident at, residence at the Garcia Center for the Arts in 2022. His newest poetry collection, Midnight and Mad Dreams, is published by World Stage Press. You can find him attending poetry readings throughout California and or follow his poetry via his Instagram, Mr. Loving Words, okay? He loves words and he has loving words. Give it up for James Coates. Uh, thank you, Bridget. Um, thank you all for being here and uh, the invitation to read poetry with you. It's been such an exciting month, uh, National Poetry Month this year. And um, I do want to read, start by reading something out of Midnight and Mad Dreams, um, which is a book that talks about you know, the, the intersection of the oppressive systems and how we uh, can work to dismantle them. This poem is titled Scarecrow's Watch. You are the sunflower in my day and have been since you first sprouted out of unforgiving clay. Wanting nothing more than your piece of dirt for an opportunity to grow, a chance to call this land home, a warm embrace instead of cold steel on outstretched leaves, to sip refreshing dreams of safe sunsets in free fields. All I am left with is time, ages to reflect on how powerless I am to keep you from being pulled apart. The hue of your petals a bullseye, a hated crop, this tortured target your inheritance, an ever-present anguish, destruction by blade or bullet, both designed to chop down life. I sometimes wish I never planted you, a black seed life intended on uprooting before you could fully bloom in this tempestuous American soil. Um, so the book is very interesting. It is on Amazon, you should check it out. But I want to read you like new stuff because I'm always writing, I'm always creating, um, and I'm putting together a new manuscript. And so I would love to just share uh, some some work from that. Um, 
because I've been I reading from that book. I want exclusives. Yeah. Thank you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, just for you, Bridget. Uh, so yeah, let's jump into these exclusives. This is titled, it, since it's springtime, I'm going to read this. This is titled, Once My Bed Was Springtime. The shortest day of the year is still too long when the cold outside hurts my body. This winter seems especially cool. The ache goes deeper than bones, passes through them and into my blood, forming icicles in my arteries, ready to snap like branches. Once my bed was springtime, flowers in bloom and rebirth and hatching opportunities. Now it is frozen tundra where life is dead or hiding. The covers an igloo I'd rather hibernate in till time is no longer time, and the two hands I watched have disappeared. When the snow comes, it seems like it's the only thing that will ever come, blocking out the chance for sun or light's warm yellow kiss on my skin. Once joy foamed like a heated spa, today memories are words that only travel as far as the tip of my tongue. The solstice is the shortest day of my longest season on the darkest of night. Even stars withhold their dazzling. Only faith remains, confidently naive of something better after hope has witnessed its final morning. So that is um, once my bedtime, once my bed was springtime. Uh, This is a short one. It's titled, Read the Sign. I am not a water sign, but the ocean feels like where I belong. Most of the time I'm in it, I can't tell if I'm flying or sinking. But the suspended feeling of weightless floating is freedom. A reminder that this body is not too heavy to carry even if the problems my mind creates wants to bury me. Are things lost at sea considered buried? Can I just call my life a sunken treasure, scattered among the endless blue like ancestors? Being down can give the impression of up when you're prone to tragedy, drifting towards forgotten. I suppose the water can be a source of joy and pleasure, So when I stare at it, that's not not the kind of escape I think of. I want to feel the liberation. I want to rise to the sky, evaporate from the earth like dew into something unseen. The ground has always been too harsh and crowded. I want to be among the clouds moving carelessly, free from it all, gone by noon, easily forgotten. Tell me, there is a way to make it to heaven without making my mother's eyes the reason it rains. And I don't know how many of you creative writers or or poets in here, um, but yeah, I feel like poetry is a is a a one of the easier. Uh, entry levels into creative writing because you could break rules and do all that fun stuff. Um, And so this this one is titled Right to the Solar Plex. A poem should kick down the door hiding your vulnerability, not afraid of what secrets it will find on the inside. It should be loud, not scared of the truth, no matter which snobs might be offended by its honesty. A poem should be decadent, rich and sinfully addictive as a double chocolate cake with creamy mousse filling. You should be able to taste it before it's on your tongue. And once it is, it feels better than you had imagined. A poem should be alchemy, kaleidoscope glasses that turn life's ugliest moments into something gorgeous, has the power of a magic wand to shift perspective because we become deeper having gone through it. A poem should punch like Iron Mike Tyson 
right to the solar plex of every person or system that wishes to oppress the freedom of creative expression as the primary method for liberation of our consciousness. A poem should make you cry or laugh or laugh so hard you cry. Not all the time though. Sometimes it makes you feel, feel things you forgot how to feel and heal places where it still hurts like a tender text ointment. A poem should wrestle with the worst parts of you so you can say things in the best possible way. It should feel like a lover's high when the words flow and a broken heart when inspiration elopes with all your ideas. A poem should breathe and bleed and live long as mountains or burn up in the sun of ambition trying to tame the brightest potential. Should leave teeth marks across your skin and goosebumps in your spirit. It should make love to your senses like a high priced excursion. Most of all, it should be the collapsing distance between your broken and your beautiful, where you are now and the person you were before the becoming and the spark gifted to the people who witness that transformation. Thank you. Uh, that's my set for you. Hope you en enjoyed it today. Ooh. If Fresh anybody wants to come off presses. mic to give, <laughs> to give their claps audibly, you can, you can. Yay. Oh my gosh. Okay. Look at that. Look at the chat. All these lines, okay? I'm about to steal some of these lines, James. I'm telling you right now, okay? And I know you personally, so you know where to find me. Tempestuous American soil. Whew. Okay. I never should have planted you. Sunken treasure, drifting towards forgotten, down the endless blue like ancestors. I personally need a t-shirt that says a poem should kick down the door. So the moment you start printing those up, you you let me know, okay? So I can order my size. Uh, broken heart with inspiration, the lows with your, all your ideas decadent alchemy like oh my gosh lana says i wish you could come to our class and read your poetry he can lana he can you can book uh mr loving words here james coates i'm going to drop his instagram down there he can drop his other contact information but that's the beauty of having living poets right here in the city of los angeles you can find them right here in socal um james hosts workshops there's all kinds of stuff so james let me ask you uh, what do you have coming up? Where else can we hear you or learn from you? Uh, yeah, so I have my monthly workshop called Be the Change, which is, is a so social justice writing workshop uh, on Zoom. So very much like this. Uh, it's it's open to the community. It's like donation based. So, um, you know, financially accessible for everyone, no matter, you know, the, the circumstances um, with that. Uh, and so that I encourage a lot of people to come to, um, other than that, I'm all over kind of doing readings all over the place. The best way to find out what's new and coming up is probably on Instagram. Um, I'll be in Compton this Saturday, um, sharing poetry because my students are performing, um, out there. And so I'm, I'm going to support them and, and cheer them on and read some poems too. And, um, I think that's. Yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to rest a little bit in in May because April has been madness. Yes, Poetry Month is pretty wild. James didn't say, but he was in the L.A. Times Festival of Books. Um, yeah. He's in almost any festival you can imagine. He is very booked and busy, busier than I am, which is saying a lot. <laughs> OK, but I, I want to share that you can absolutely invite poets like James to come into your classroom and share poetry. And even if you're a student who's like, yo, I wish we were reading this kind of poetry in my classroom, suggest. If you have a local poet that you heard and you're like, they're really great, tell your instructor like, hey, I know maybe not right now, but like I've been reading this poetry about this guy, he's really great, you know, and let them know who's out there. I mean, I try to bring poets like James out whenever mm -hmm. I can, right? Um, and that's a great entry point, okay? That's a great entry point. Thank you, James, so much. Okay, one last thing before you go. You know I'm gonna milk it out here. I'm gonna ask you a bunch of stuff. Okay, we got all these poets in the house, okay? All these poets sharing their work, uh, maybe for some people for the first time, 
right? Saying this is my first time ever sharing my work out loud. So what advice do you have for that first time, my first time ever sharing poet that's in the house right now, or the one who's watching the replay and it's like, dang, I should have came to the, to the drop the mic event. Oh my goodness. What's your advice to them for this first time out? Uh, keep going. Like it gets easier. I, you know, the first time I got up to read, it was post-grad school. Um, I hadn't written or shared poetry in front of people ever at that point. Um, like, like I, I wrote poetry, but I've never shared it in front of people. And so like I was up there reading, my hands was shaking. It was like a barbershop full of people. Um, and uh, I just I just kept going and sharing poetry. And then over time, you know, it's gotten easier. But I'm a very like, um, I don't like being in front of people. And so poetry has, it, that part, the performance part has been extremely challenging. Um, to, but I feel like I, it's important to get the the poems out and what they say and connect with people. And so uh, I just persevere. Yes, I love that, James. Keep going. But to could keep going, a, first you have to start. Could I ask ahead, a Warren. question before you go? Um, when you when you when you start a poem, um, how do you do you write it all at once or do you workshop it for a long time and like tweak with it? Or does it just all come to you like in one sitting and you just, you know, the words just keep going? Uh, there's there's various entry points like um, sometimes I do prompts um, and then I'll just like like in our, our workshop, we usually read a poem. And then I'll give a prompt and then people will have like 10 minutes to write on that prompt. And usually people don't have finished pieces in that 10 minutes, uh, but they have like the seed, they have the start um, of an idea. And maybe it's just like two or three times or or maybe it's closer to being finished, but um, but it's not done. And so usually from that point, you have your idea, you have like the the main stuff written down uh, yeah. or where you would like the poem to head and then from there you can add more or take it to to workshop to edit or share it with people and see the response you get and sometimes if you're not getting the response you like or you're expecting then that may be like a sign that um the poem poem's not finished and you still have more work to do with it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. thank you Mm -hmm. Thank you. That was a great question. Okay. All right, you all. So the mic is hot. The stage is more. Oh, I got a question here from Susan. My apologies, Susan. I see you there. Yeah, I, I just Go wanted ahead, Susan. to thank, thank James. Uh, I was very moved. Um, and it's interesting to hear you say that it's a challenge for you to, to become a speaker and present because you have a really um, intimate, warm, um, inviting style. And your quietness almost has its own power. Um, so I really appreciate you greatly. So oh, thank you, Susan. Yeah. yeah. I love that. That's a great, that's something that we talked about a bit last week uh, in the read aloud workshop is that you lean into your voice and what you sound like. And if you're quieter or louder or faster talker or whatever it is, you figure out your best pacing, your best thing. Don't worry about imitating somebody else, right? Trust me, you don't want to go, I don't want to go after James at a poetry event because he's got everybody like swooning in the aisles. They're knocked out, they're laid out, okay? I get up there, I'm loud, I'm yelling, I'm, you know, boisterous. And, but James, he soothes, you know? So no, that, that is a wonderful thing to point out. We all sound so different and we all have different ways of presenting our pieces. Yes, thank you so much, James. Once again, let's give it up one more time for James Coates. Thank you, thank you, thank you for joining us. So in the meantime, while James was sharing, we did get some snaps in the chat. And I know James can't stay the whole time. So thank you, James, for hanging out with us for as long as you could. Thank you so much. Because he's, he's busy, y'all. He's booked and he's busy. And we love to see it, okay? Um, we did get a couple of signups. Okay, so I believe first up, we have a, a veteran of our events here, okay, coming to the stage. Thank you. I see another person signed up in the chat right now. Coming to the stage, we have, drum roll please, no. 
surprise. He signed up. I know. I, I wasn't expecting to be like the first one, <laughs> especially yeah, after James. Yeah. I'm like, that was great. Mm -hmm. So I have one, a poem from the uh, workshop, but I do have a second one if we have time, if that's okay. Cool. So I do I just start? This is the first time I've done readings in front of a group, okay? <laughs> yes, you just, you get your name called and you get to the mic and then you bring out the poetry, yes. All right, okay, so this is called Syzygy of My Realities. A syzygy of my realities, a dance of tricksters and saboteurs. Earth existence pulls me, universe pulls me, I struggle to define myself. Two gamuts collided, genesis of potential. Desire path, eons worn through the landscape of earthly delights and pain, lost. In the gravity of expectations, constructs imposed, pulling my bones, my skull from flesh that binds, becoming may just be a fantasy. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> yeah! I audibly respond every time. I like the journey that poem has gone through until today. I like that. Thank you, Noel. Um, you said you had another piece you want to share too, right? Yeah, I do have a second one. Okay, so we're going to bring you back around because I, I want to okay. hear more. I want to hear more. I want to hear more. Okay, so just Thank so folks know who are just coming in, you heard Noel. The mic is hot, okay? The stage is ready. You don't have to worry about signing up separately. Just pop in the chat and say, hey, I'd like to go next. And Roxana will get you and she'll she'll feed me the list, all right? So I got a little line starting here. Mm -hmm. Ooh, people in the chat. Last line, power. Where it says, love the cosmic and universal imagery, gravity and pulling. Yeah. Yes. Good job, Noel. All right. Good job. <laughs> that was great. That was great. Look at all the folks excited. Oh, you got us going. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like it. Okay. All right. So next up, we have coming to the stage, Alicia. Hi. Um, hey. and this is my first time. So hopefully it's like first time sharing. <laughs> um, it's called I Get Lost. I get lost in your brown eyes. They remind me of the dark, rich colors of the earth. And with the same strength that the sea has to wash upon the shore, I want to wash my body over your skin and let the salty water I carry sink into you. I get lost in your smile. The way your lips curl up together and slightly glisten, and for a moment I wish I too could take the shape of a cup so that I could press against them. I get lost in your mind, so full of wonder and knowledge that a mere conversation with you can cause me to want to read every book ever written. I want to dive into your mind and swim among each layer, unlocking all the thoughts you feel the need to confine within those walls, while drinking in all the pain you choose to hide from the world. I get lost in your laughter, the way it is set off by the littlest thing and can spill over for hours, lifting the dark cloud that surrounds our bodies and lifts us above the world, if only for a second. I get lost in your body, how my hands are not big enough to cover all the wonders it has to offer, and how my heart can't get over the feeling of your heart beating within my ear. I wanna grow arms so they can encompass all of you and you can lie inside the warm layers of my love. I get lost. I get lost in your dreams and I wanna stand beside you as you face down each of them and get closer to the dreams you've held on to from the time you were able to think for yourself and decide just who you wanna be. I get lost somewhere inside of you. All that I wanted or dreamed of has been lost, lost amongst the layers of your mind, the beating of your heart, and the pain in your soul. I get lost, and I need you to become lost too, so that somewhere in the purgatory of time, we can find each other and explore the wonders that we hide. Listen, listen. You know what I love? A last line that chin checks me. I love a last line that grabs me and shakes me and makes me want to start the poem again. That was fantastic. Thank you, Alicia, for a first timer. Thank you. Sure about that? <laughs> I, yeah, I don't, I don't do this. I do um, watch a lot of, um, or at least I wanted to participate in a lot of Brave Voices, but I have a lot of health issues. So like, I don't attend a lot of things outside of this. 
So, and here we have, there's so many great virtual workshops and readings. You got to get tapped in. We need your voice. That was incredible. Thank you, Alicia, so much. Look in the chat. People are like, yes, drinking all the pain you had from the world. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. I feel that. Mm -hmm. Your lips want to be the shape of a cup so I can press upon them. Ah, yes. Thank you. Ooh, okay. I see what y'all doing right now. The purgatory of time. Hmm. I see what's going on here. Y'all come to take my job. I see, I see what's happening now. Okay. I, I see what's happening. And I, I'll happily give it up. I'll give it over to you. Absolutely. All right. Next up coming to the stage. We have Warren. Uh-oh, Warren's muted. Come on, Warren. I'm dancing. Can you guys I'm hear me? For you. Yes. Okay. Um, here we go. Let's see here. So this, I have, uh, I think three that I would like to read. This first one's called Daydream. It's a bit shorter. Daydream. Apprehensive, I wander into imagination and fractals. Fantasy finds footing in my memories. My thoughtless heart sick with swirls yearns with endless churning i bought this hurt even bargained for it i cut off my left hand i write with for that i berated the lovesick idiot mirror and broke glass with my right hand bleeding fantasy and waking up home apprehensive especially warren says he has some short some short ones to give us here but we want them This one's called Clawed Out. A passion within me seeks to claw out. It wants to rip the world apart. I am its house and only guard, tending to daydreams in my yard. The noise inside me seeks to shout, but is too young to make a sound. Round my mind, I've tried to choke it, but the passion stands its ground burning magma in my chest, esophagus. I'm spitting lava out my throat when I speak. No one but me could help me. Weak, I tremble with the fury of a life not yet lived. For I am impatient and eager to die. The lid of my casket hasn't been made yet. I often forget. It's not a race to the finish line. And then, thank you. And then my last one. Um, actually, those are pretty short. I can, I can, I think I can do a fourth one. We'll get one more in, then we're gonna. Br we'll bring you back around. Uh oh, did I lose you? I feel like my I blinked <sighs> you off the screen. Oh, there you go. Okay, we'll do one more of the short ones, and we'll bring you back around. Okay, okay. Here, I'll, okay, I'll do my last one then. Thank um, you. This one's called Family and Reading. Briefly. I feel kinship in the fever of feeling. What was given to me by reading, I write as well. Writing raw and sick so they may share my fever. My hands were stricken with ill. The tempest of tears wept over history has staggered and stained me. And I can relate so well to the bittersweet thinking of someone else reading what I wrote myself. Those authors that were bleeding, the ink of the pages I read had passed in my absence. And I thought myself saddened for the emotions they spent. Though I find family and feeling, it's always retreating when I remember I'll die. But I comfort myself with the bittersweet thought that someone will find family in feelings once mine. Yes. Family and feelings and thinking about reading and like taking on that emotional, that you know, the pathos, the pathos of someone else's work and how it kind of enters into you. And then as you write, imagining yourself kind of also in that cycle, that's what we're doing right now. I mean, listen, that's the point of sharing is to pull people into your world. Oh, that's great. Thank you, Warren. All right. Yeah. Okay. We're, we're, we are spinning lava. He says spinning lava, James. 
and we're, he's doing it. We're doing it. I think it's happening. Okay. Susan says, some will find family in my feelings once mine. Yes. There's a little bit more. You might have to dig a little bit more into that line. That could be a start of a, a even a second poem, maybe a, um, uh, what did we talk about last class? Maybe even like a golden shovel, take that line and expand upon it. Okay. We'll talk more about golden shovels. Warren's in my class. We haven't gotten the golden shovels yet, but I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll bring golden shovels up in class and you might want to play with that a little bit. Mm -hmm. All Thank right. You. Yes, so next up we have coming to the stage, Sophia. Hi. Hey, Sophia. Okay, um, this one is called Boots. Okay. Kicking off my boots, that's when I'll unconsciously mutter, I love you. Falling and spinning forever, I'll never hit the ground. But the carpet looks lovely, it looks like snow and karma. I want to bathe in it, but I know I'll spin forever. I didn't mean it all when I said it, for Jupiter was my witness, Venus as my prosecutor. Where did he go? I suppose he was here a second ago, but he's gone now. It's time to dress in jewels and smile kindly. It's time to say nothing, but the people expect me to say something, and I do, and there's nothing to say. It's not fair when I'm easy to read, but the chapters have all strayed away. I don't own this body, this face, or even this mood. Grab your grasp your pieces one by one and never let someone intrude. You live by this demand, and I couldn't let you realize that you can wake up at noon, hear the birds sing, and play without mining at your own brain school. You know, I want to commend Sophia and Warren had this as well. The rhyme scheme is working, honey. It's working. Okay. It's it's also it's like it's a surprise every time. It fits well, it doesn't feel forced. Keep it up, keep that up. It has a rhythm that really felt very comfortable. Your pacing was great too, you know, kind of pulling us in. That was amazing. Thank you, Sophia. Yeah, strayed chapter. It's easy to read, but the chapters fade away. Mm -hmm. Okay, come on, metaphors. I like it, I like it a lot, okay? Thank you, Sophia. So uh, for folks who are just joining us, we are in the middle of Drop the Mic poetry event okay right now we are sharing our words on an open mic everyone has around two to three minutes to share and if you want to share a little bit more you can come back and share again just let us know in the chat hey i want to go one more time just let us know and roxana will add you to the list and i'll grab you and pull you back to the stage okay we want to make sure everyone has a chance to share and you also notice you know a little building in confidence that second time around it feels real good you know and i'm still I'm still peer pressuring Roxana to share her poem. I'm just saying, okay, just, you know, maybe the rest of you, is she listening? Uh, maybe the rest of you can peer pressure her as well. All right. So coming up next to the stage, I need some actual drums one of these days. Coming up next to the stage, we have Susan. The crowd well, mine goes is wild. Little, mine is a little different right now because um my mind can only focus on one thing and and um in a few weeks my son is getting married so he asked me just about a week ago to say something and it's not really a poem because that's just not how it came out but the first thing that came out was the i just drew a circle and i wrote at the top noah and teddy cosmo and love at the bottom that's their baby they're already they already have a little one. And then on the sides, I wrote Noah and Teddy, each on each side. Her name is Theodora, but she goes by Teddy. In the middle, I wrote community and the circle. Um, so that's, that's what came out. And then I wrote my explanation of that. You ask for advice, but I have no advice. You ask for wisdom, but I have none. What I have is experience. That's what I can offer. My experience is that love is greater than any petty fight, that forgiveness overcomes any obstacle, that there must be room in your marriage for five presences. The presence of the Renaissance man, Noah, the individual, the man who loves drums, books, thoughts, dynamic art, music, physics, and laws of the universe, who loves to talk and wander and ponder and move. The presence of Teddy with goddess energy, a woman who loves art, education, community, collective action, expression, justice, dance, and children, culture, history, and roots. 
the synchronistic presence of Noah and Teddy, the union of two minds, spirits, hearts, souls, and body that almost instantly connected to their place in each other's realm. The effervescent cosmo, the world in this one young happy spirit bundle of light and joy, burbles of laughter and life. And finally five, the calming, centering presence of that which is greater than you all, whatever you call it, great spirit, God, family, community, justice. It is the circle that surrounds you and holds you and protects you. So is it gonna work? You you said it's not a that's a poem. That's a poem. Remember, James said yeah. the beauty of poetry is that it can it doesn't have to follow any rules. That is a poem to me. It's visually a poem. It's audibly a poem, verbally a poem. Yeah, that's like a, poem a poem to me. Is it like, okay, you're the first yeah. people to hear it, so I'll just. <laughs> and, and we are so honored, and congratulations to your family on this great celebration. That is beautiful. Yeah. I would love to see the circle, right? I would love to see that even. I mean, we're colleagues, so maybe I'll bother you about that a little bit later, but I think that is a beautiful representation as a circle physically. And then the kind of the, the way it sounds, like we're kind of circling back around and kind of being this complete entity. That is beautiful, Susan. Well, thank you. Yeah, I just I just think it's really important for two people coming together to recognize the individual plays as balancing a role they have to honor the individuals otherwise i don't think relationships can work so that's like i was trying to communicate that <laughs> listen no better place to do that but in a poem listen it sounds great to me poetry can look however you want it to look and think about this some of the best fiction nonfiction steal a bit from poetry to make it you know fancy okay there's definitely some fiction nonfiction speeches things like that i'm like no that's a poem it's a monologue but no it's a poem you know and so no that that was incredible thank you so much susan for sharing all oh, that's exciting oh i love it i love it i love it all right y'all we are off to the races okay let's see up next we have following up susan's poem that brought us around we're coming back around we're coming to another newcomer to the group here we have is it sakunet yes welcome sakunet yeah thank you for joining us um hello <laughs> it's my first time here um i just running around the place trying to find a quiet um area sorry okay <clears throat> so my poem, um, poetry, is called Who Knows? Okay, sorry, I need to <laughs> breathe. Okay. Who knows what behind a disgusting, muscular smile? The manner that's too normal to be distorted. But who knows? Who knows what behind a grievous pair of eyes? Every drop of tears running down those cheek, um, like acid that burns, melting the mind till the body go numb. Leaving only scar deep down, too deep to be covered. But who knows? Who knows what makes a person distorted and fall apart? The pressure as heavy as a mountain crushing down on them until the body mushed. The love stronger than anything, but as much as the revenge waiting to erupt. The truth like salt sprinkled then rub against the open wound. But whose fault is it? Who knows what is right and what is wrong? The law never side with the truth, only the weight on the balance. When the truth is revealed, my eyes, oh no, sorry, the eyes which covered open with different color. Running tears are stored to be a revenging tool. Scars are used to be a reminder to the, to the mind on who consumed that soul. When the truth is revealed, who is no one? Who is not family? Who is not others? And that is me. I am the villain within my shadow. That's it. Thank you. Listen, these last lines, y'all are knocking me out. 
Okay, knocking me out. I love a poem that continues to ask the question and kind of seek for an answer over and over. Okay, but who is this? And it's not this, it's this, it's not this, it's this. And then this is happening and turning. I love that. Thank you, Sakuna, for the first time. Y'all listen. Thank I'm you. honored <laughs> for bringing your first time here to, to drop the mic. Yes, thank you so much. All right, yes. Yeah. So, and of course, folks, if you would like to join again and, and pop in and have another poem, let us know in the chat. Roxana will add you to the list. All right, we're coming back around again to the person who began our share portion, okay? Coming back to the stage for an encore, we have No. Woo -hoo! Right. <laughs> I don't know if this is gonna be easier, but let's see. <laughs> All right, this is called A Summer Drowning. Smaller than average, I was eight. Trailed behind classmates, stampeding, rushing and darting with whimsy and silliness to reach their goal. The pool was huge, enticing, so blue. Seemed to promise deliverance. The imagined coolness would bring relief. Wishing, Pacific ripples washing off worries of what father expected. Silently opposed to Ma's whispered boundaryless indulgences, longing for the crashing of their words to stop, my denigrated and disregarded shadow in the corner of their existence. Splash after splash, each disappeared and reappeared with laughter and joy. I followed with anticipation and stopped at the edge of the new world, pushed to discover what I yearned for. Fear enveloped me as my arms flayed below the calm water above, distorted shadows just watched from above. I quickly realized yelling was not an option in life. I was still invisible. Father touted my win with his Pinewood Derby award. Ma brushed me aside with do not disturb gifts. I was suspended in silence, hoping in solitude I grasped for a way out of fluid hell. Was I crying or was it just the water rushing past my face as my panic gestures created violent currents? Every frantic reach for something to hold onto, expectations challenged, downward, never upward. I question, why me? I question. Will I be noticed? I question, will I be missed? Woo. Yeah, Lori, I agree. Woo. Woo. <laughs> That's deep. That was amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. I love that these poems, your poems take a journey. Mm -hmm. It's like an epic through emotions, feelings. I mean, all kinds of terrain, I'll say, in texture, right? Very. Okay, no, listen. And ultimately, you asked you asked the question, the 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 Job, you know, down to the bone of suffering question: Why me? You know, mm, so yeah. It, mm, it mm. touches every soul. Yeah. In the chat, me goosebumps. <laughs> oh, goosebumps! Absolutely. My eyebrows are like raising, like almost to the ceiling with every line. I'm like, oh. and this. That was amazing. Thank you, No. Yeah. Do not disturb gifts. Lovely phrase, Warren says in the chat. Shouting was not an option in life. I'm still invisible. Yes. Was I crying or was it just? That's just a beautiful, just, I mean, it could that could be a line that you can do a repetition poem with just that line over and over again. Was I crying or was it just? And then feel, I mean, there I have so many, I'm stealing so many lines from you all. This is amazing. Um, <laughs> my next book will all be pilfered lines from SMC. <laughs> I'll make sure you're all in the dedication <laughs> because, oh my gosh, that was amazing. All right. So that sounded great. We're coming back around once again for another encore. Do you want more? Yes. I want more. Okay. And I want more from Alicia. I just want to say I used to have oh, an Susan. assignment where I would give students 10 poems by Rumi. And they had to take one line from each poem and yes. make their own poem about something in their life. So you could take 
our phones, oh, absolutely. our lives and do that. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm definitely, Susan, you already know how my brain's clicking. I'm like, mm-hmm. That's your assignment. <laughs> it's, it's, it's going. And even for you all, just as a aside, when you want to prompt yourself and you feel like you're in a writing rut, go back to your poems, grab a line, hook a line to it. Like, like, like literally keep hooking lines to an old line of yours and you will see a new poem emerge. Prompt yourself with your own brilliance or borrow some from somebody else. But either way, give it a shot. That was great. Yes. Okay. Talking about hooking lines. I cannot wait to see what Alicia's getting ready to give us here because I'm already on the floor from the first one. Okay. Alicia, you ready for me? Yes, ma'am. Hit it. Um, this is called Thoughts Tonight. I- I'm not sure if it's completed, but it felt completed. Um, the more I hang out with my female friends, the more I find things to hate about myself. I wake up, look in the mirror, and I try to find one thing I like about me. As I get dressed, I remind myself that I'm more than the phantom phone calls that I had the night before or the long list of invisible boyfriends and midnight callers in my past. I try to remind myself that beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And yet I wonder if that's true and you never find someone to hold you, are you ever truly beautiful? I tell myself and my girlfriends that we are strong and beautiful and talented. And I hope they don't hear my voice shake or my legs quiver. While in my head, I wonder if I am doing like Disney and setting them up for false hopes of someone to come along and love them for who they are. Don't get me wrong, on a good day, I'm strong. But it's funny how one or two comments and I can weaken. And yes, like most overweight women, I try to blame it all on the weight and assume that if I was a size two, I would know how to love or have love. But if it takes being a size two to find it, would it be real? Are we all just little girls inside wanting to be the Barbies we once held in our hand? It never surprises me when a good friend will flirt with or hell even sleep with the man I'm talking to. To show me how little or no I know them or how little or no they saw me. An action I've never understood, but done from the closest of women's to the new ones in my life. A common practice I seem to find these days. How funny your best friend will tell you what an amazing girl you are. How unstoppable you'd be if you could just lose the weight. And how that statement, however filled with love may seem, feels like a shot to my heart. I also find it funny that the men that choose to hang out with me regularly tell me I'm beautiful, want to let me meet their lust, but I'm just not great enough. Not a one to get a title or be shown, to hide in the shadows never seen. To be clear, I am not looking for a petty felt post, a boost of confidence to tell me my time will come. I've given up waiting for my Kendall to walk through the door. I have no false hopes of a knight in shining armor coming to rescue me from this dim. I've lived it far too long. I learned a long time ago that the fairy tales I grew up on have no reality in my world. I don't have birds helping me with laundry or seven men hiding me from a stepmother a spinning wheel to prick me finger and find me asleep out of my prison. Hell, not even an ocean in all of California to hide in. I am, however, working my butt off, doing the job, raising a child solo, going to school and accomplishing my dreams. So, hey, maybe the weight I carry is just in the body that was built to handle the help. I don't need it. So it's okay, I'll look in this mirror, I'll find my beauty even if it's in the eyes of my daughter. Woo! That was amazing. Ditto. (laughs) Ditto. Incredible. Phantom phone calls. Yes. Okay, that was a journey. I I like it. It was a journey through vulnerability. And that's what poetry is. And that's what makes sharing poetry so amazing right is that you get a chance to speak truth to so many things so many people are thinking about but can't put words to right and I know you said you know if a poem is done or not it sounds pretty complete to me okay maybe if you want to go back in and play around and add more things have at it but the message is loud and clear okay I was in it I was invested okay yes And a great pull around, right? In the chat, Warren says the Barbie and Disney references and also the last line about the weight you carry. Yeah, that metaphor about the weight you carry and the waiting and the weight, right? Oh, yes, okay. Susan says- Post it on a billboard. Please, okay, a (laughs) t-shirt. I will take it. 
Okay, I'll take two. All right. <laughs> um, the metaphor of the tree at the end, because it sounds like you're talking about roots and strength. Oh, that might be cool to kind of ground it, little roots right there. Um, to fight against the Cinderella complex continues. Yes. Okay. Um, don't worry. You know, you're Barbie. He's just Ken. That's that's how the commercial goes, right? And he's just Ken. I love that. Thank you, Alicia, for bringing that back around. So now you can't say you're a first timer anymore. Okay. You did it and came back for an encore. Okay. So you are now in the league. Welcome. Welcome to the League of Poets. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Coming up next for a second time, one more poem. We have Warren. Uh oh. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> always catch you off guard. Always catch you off guard. This is how the poetry gets you. You're so invested. You're like, oh, it's my turn now? Yes. Yes. Hit it, Warren. Can everyone hear me? All right, this is called Star Sitter. Hey, Star Sitter, I watched you shine and flitter. Let's go for a walk. I'd love to know you better. What makes you tick and flicker? You're a caretaker. You tend to your garden and maintain a great lake and feed all the marlin. But what's at stake without you? Can we still thrive? Without your light, could we survive? I'd like to be a star sitter too. I'll take care of you. Two star sitters is plenty. Two guardians for our galaxy. Two protectors of the realm. When you're sleepy, I'll take the helm. While I'm here, you won't be overwhelmed. So no need to Twitter and flicker. I'll be your star sitter sitter. I like this idea of the star sitter. Mm -hmm. Without your light, can we survive? Sophia says in the chat. Yes. Mm -hmm. And once again, great work on the rhyme there too. It really pulls you in. Uh-huh. Okay. So now that I know you do poetry all the time, I'm going to be bothering you about this constantly in class. Just be ready for that conversation. Um, I like the idea of this metaphor kind of extending, you know, continuing to grow and grow and grow and grow and grow. And the metaphor teaches you as you go. That's the beauty of a great metaphor is that sometimes the metaphors, you catch them right away, you know exactly what someone's talking about. And sometimes a metaphor has to grow with you throughout the poem. You have to kind of sit with it, okay? And learn, right, the, the romance of it as uh, Susan's talking about here in the chat. Great, all right, so y'all, can you believe it? We got three more readers, but if there's somebody here who hasn't shared yet at all, and would like to share, please let us know in the chat. We would love to have you. We've got three more readers to go. We would love to add somebody that hasn't shared yet. All right. No pressure, but you know, let us know in the chat. All right. Oh, this is going so well. I, I wish we could do this all day. Honestly, uh, this is my favorite part. <laughs> I've been waiting for this one the whole time. Okay. So can I say one more thing? Me, Susan? Would, 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 would your child, your line about your daughter at the end, I believe was daughter. Mm -hmm. Just like to think about the like those words a little more because it's almost as if you 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 doubt she has mm -hmm. the the strength to hold you up or that you to love you the way you need to be and I bet it I bet it's bigger than that I don't know I just I just wanted to throw that out there to make you think yeah. about that because that felt like that's the one piece that I was talking about the tree too but anyway sorry i just wanted to share that because i, I Susan's like a master cool. instructor you can tell <laughs> yeah. i, I tell, appreciate no. it i really do i um i write a lot about her um i i have i had cancer i'm waiting to find out if i'm still in remission and so a lot of my newer stuff is like about how strong she's had to be i mean she's 10 i got diagnosed when she was mm. six um so her watching that happen and like her I have poems about like her her sight of what was happening you know mm -hmm. so yeah I I definitely understand I, I appreciate the feedback for sure yeah it might have been just you might have used the word just and that that gave me pause because as if it wasn't enough and I I felt like it must be more than that somehow but I don't know anyway or that contemplation could be a separate poem, right? The just could be in this poem and the next growth of the work could be in the next poem kind of investigating that and digging into it, right? To honor the just from this poem and to go further deeper into the next poem. This is why I love a good 
y'all come to poetry workshops i'm just saying get get this feeling in the poetry workshop okay you never know what you're missing out on in the poetry workshop we're going to talk more about workshops before we get out of here too because i want to make sure that we leave here prepared to be creative again in the world all right so we're down to our last three uh readers and we have a featured reader after that so coming back around again for another encore do you want more i do Okay, from Sophia. The last time sharing is like was so anxiety inducing and I typically like public speaking, but I wanted to calm down and do another one. Um, I feel like I was stuttering. This one is called Blackberries. Um, and when she opened it, something terrifying came out. The only way I could describe it is a pool finding a drain. And of me being me, a speck of dust, and of you being the same, but defying all aspects of reality, cultivating that idea into something more. It gets hard for you to be stimulated by someone other than yourself. You like to explore you, and I like that there was something selfish about it, but justifiable, honest. So when you said you wanted to eat the night sky like it's a big blackberry, I was intrigued. And you said you wanted to eat the whole sky, get fat off of it because there's something beyond the sky, beyond space, and if you just consumed those, you'd reach the beyond. Taste it, explore it, eat it up like blackberries again, and find yourself in what I imagine is processing infinity rather than being stuck in an infinite process. Committing to a dream makes you fear the cherubs, too many dreams, too much time for suffering. I ignored your worries and it broke my heart, and we share this lie not only in mine, but in your chalky purple soul too. I've decided to get fat off my own blackberries, my own sky after this, and whisper thank you every day for your cowardice. Processing infinity? Yes, that, that turn in that line. Very good, Sophia, very good. Okay, so once another person who can no longer say, I'm saying, uh -huh. I think you got a few witnesses here that say, yes, you are, this is your thing. This is your thing now. You all notice I invited James Coates because he is a quieter poet when he reads, because he presents a different, like a really calming persona as he's reading. And that could be you, right? You don't have to be the big boom bostic, you know, come into the room, command the space. Well, you can come in and command the space by drawing us in to listen, right? And I, I'll tell you a secret. Almost every poet I know hates public speaking and is an introvert, almost every single one. I know a lot of poets. We all said the same thing. I'm an introvert too, believe it or not, okay? But there's something about the comfort of poetry and about that kind of, these kind of spaces where you feel good in the company of people who are like you, right? At least in that way, you share this thing. And so we know the vulnerability of poetry. We know the, the decadence of poetry and we're ready to receive it. And so here's a space where you can be completely yourself in that. And if you're nervous, steer into the nerves as a part of the poem. I've done so many readings where I've said, I don't know why I'm shaking right now. Maybe it's the poem. And then I go into it with the shakes, right? Sometimes I finish a poem, I'm shaking then after, right? So like, just steer into it. It's safe to land. Come on in for a landing. Yes. Thank you, Sophia. Yes. All right. Coming back once more for another encore. We have Susan. I I just read just so you can introduce me. That's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> That's worth it. <laughs> this was a prompt that I saw somewhere, a first sense of scent. And I wrote a first sense of scent of the newborn, untethered to the world's pain or joy, yet anchored to the mysterious mixture of blood tracing back generations to Russia, Germany, Scotland, England, Croatia, Mexico, New York, Chicago, Minnesota, Iowa, and so much more unknown and in that first gentle caress, that head of peach fuzz rubbed on cheek, that essence of purity and light that ecstasy of the link to past and to future, but most of all that sense of a new cosmos in our cosmo of newness and possibility of love and infinite gladness to hold and smell our first brand new grandson in our hands as if we are the first ever to do so and to have him look in our eyes as if we are all he ever wanted and searched for coming into this fiery world. 
Cosmo. As if we were the first to ever do it. I mean, that is, that's the beauty of it. Of course, it's so precious. Oh my gosh, Susan. I'm seeing a poetry collection about family and life and the simplicity of so, so many things, but also how complex the emotions are. That's what I'm saying. I'm not saying you have to write one. I'm just saying if you were to consider it, perhaps you have a chapbook on your hands. You know, I mean, I think we need more poetry like this that contemplates these things. So I, you know, just not, no pressure, but maybe a little, a little teeny little bit of, of pressure. I, I love it. I so much. So much. <laughs> Yes, thank you, Susan. All right, so last but not least, coming to the open mic, we have SMC Library's very own, and who's, this entire thing is her idea, by the way. I just want to tell you that. She came to us and said, I want to do a, a Poetry Month event. I'm thinking of a few of them. This is all her. The flyers, all her. This, this is Roxy, okay? Now we get Roxy the Poet. Coming to the stage, we have Roxy. <laughs> Thank you so much. I know it's like, it was my idea. I can't not do it. Um, and I love that we're so, you're right. We're surrounded by first timers, introverts, everything. And I thought librarians were the only introverts. So I didn't know poets were too. So that's great. I'm, we're not, maybe that's why we get along, right? <laughs> um, and I am just like the rest of, um, our poets today, I am also filled with nerves and I might be speaking a little too fast. Um, but before I get started, I just wanna say, I love um, Susan, your, your um, letter, well, the letter you wrote or your, the speech that you're preparing and that you weren't sure if it was a poem, I, totally a poem, it moved me to tears. My eyes got watery and it's very relatable because I'm in this transitional period with my son who is now a teenager, um, and so this poem is basically about realizing that and how our role changes in their life. And um, so I finally titled it Yesterday. So it's Yesterday. <laughs> and I edited it a little bit since our last workshop. So it, I don't know that it's complete, but it is cleaner than it was before. So here you go. So yesterday I was needed, but today I wait. Yesterday I hung the moon and rose with the sun. Yesterday, I was a smile on your rosy round face and the light in your eyes. Yesterday, you followed me around the creaky wood floors and always sat by my side. Yesterday, I soothed your aches with a warm embrace and kissed your nightmares away. Yesterday, I was needed, but today I wait. And that's it. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, everyone. Yay. I love that the a lot. with you. You heard Lori. Thank you. you mm -hmm. That was lot. amazing, Roxy. I love that so many of the poems today had a family like a th a theme kind of floating throughout. Also a theme of infinity and of like limitlessness, but also like testing a limit, finding there is no limit or finding there is a limit to something and, you know, kind of redirecting. I saw that kind of popping up in a lot of the poems, a lot of metaphysical things going on. Uh, but really, really, again, a lot of family kind of deeply rooted, introspective pieces which are really beautiful and great you all I mean I, I I'm incredibly honored that you all were here to share with us I know all of us couldn't stay people have midterms things like that um before we get out of here I'm going to share I'm the last featured poet I've been promising that I was going to share at every event and then not sharing uh but before I share I have something to share with you and this is a flyer by our uh wonderful uh Diane Ariel who cannot be here today let me pop that up really quickly we teach creative writing here at SMC Hooray, okay. And so if you are interested and you are a student or community member, even a faculty or staff member, please come on in. We have two creative writing courses right now offered um, in the fall, winter, summer, and spring. And that's English 30A, which is beginning creative writing and English 30B. You can learn about craft, share your work, cultivate imagination. And all of these workshops are multi-genre. So you can write poetry, you can write fiction, creative nonfiction. You'll go through a range of different things, kind of testing and trying out what you like, okay? If you want more information about this, you can please reach out to anyone in the English department, but we do have our very own Diane Arieff 
Clark, who is welcome to, to hear from you. Would love to talk to you about poetry, love to talk to you about fiction, creative nonfiction. She's an amazing instructor as well. She teaches creative writing at 30A, 30B. I teach it as well. There are a ton of great uh, professors in the department who would love to talk to you about this. So please reach out to us, let us know. We're gonna pop this flyer also in the chat just for you so you can grab it. Uh, please think about taking creative writing with us here at SMC. Oh, there you go, Alicia, I see your hand. Um, I was just wondering, does SMC um, offer like a, it's like a poetry slam or spoken word like club, for like the competitive side or things like that? Like, mm -hmm. I know that my daughter's school, I'm working on implementing them or helping them get into the Brave New, uh, sign on to Brave New Voices and end up in mm -hmm. July or I think it's June or July, they're going up to San Francisco and they competitively do it. And not necessarily for SMC on a competitive base. But there's like for me, my um, philosophy professor sent me the link last night for this. But up until mm -hmm. now, I didn't know this existed and I'm not on campus. So the flyers don't mm -hmm. always get to me. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm just wondering if there's anything like that at SMC that is going to be more than just during this month, like where stuff like this is occurring or if it's possible or what that looks like, because there are some other students that um. Like we formed our own little alliance that's kind of like we all have health issues and we're all like this is kind of like what saves us from checking out or quitting college or whatever and so i was just like oh i should ask while i'm here that is a great question so i have heard i actually just spoke to a counselor about this the other day um that there are a couple of students with like their own kind of like you said kind of homegrown student collective just kind of finding each other um i don't know of a smc like a large team but there's definitely, yeah, there's poetry clubs. Susan's saying here in the chat, uh, Professor Mario Padilla has a poetry club. There are even kind of small, uh, I would even say like kind of small um, poetry like collectives write, writing um, zines together uh, coming out of these creative writing classrooms. But I'll tell you this, if you think that starting a poetry club would be a great idea that's a little bit larger, maybe one that is doing more of the spoken word side of things, listen, let's do it. Let's, let, I mean, I, I, I think, student demand drives these things starting. And I think over the generations, things have kind of popped up and kind of gone away over time. Uh, for us, this is our first time doing this for Poetry Month, but there are always poetry events um, kind of happening in smaller scale, right? Um, during a le the literary lecture series in the fall yeah. and the spring sometimes, yeah. There's so a girl in my class that. that's publishing her poetry book this month, I think. And she was like asking me about it. And I was like, the closest I've ever come was when brave new voices hit the scene I was like and that was kind of like more of a, like an inner city thing I was like so I know it's pretty popular like where I used to live but since I came to the west side it's a little bit harder to find it's not like kind of like the ones from the inner city for me were more enriching than the ones that I found um localized to this side so when I saw this today I was really excited because I was like i it's the first time I've seen this outlet. So I will definitely um, reach out to her and see if there's something we can do. Unfortunately, yeah. due to our medical circumstances, our voices on SMC campus aren't always heard as loud because we're not awesome. physically there to fight as hard as like students that can like show up and be a voice that like is seen. <laughs> but it could be virtual, right? It could be virtual. Yeah. Let's let's chat more. Shoot me an email. Uh, my last name is Robinson. I know it's not on the screen. Um, uh, I'll pop it in the chat too. Or Roxy, keep popping in the chat, just in case. Um, and let's let's talk more about this because I would love to in, to support. And anybody watching, involved, you want to get involved in this too? Let's let's talk about it. Okay. So we got four minutes before we have to get out of here, okay? And I just wanna say once again, thank you to everyone who's come out to all these events. It's been so great to have this collective. I would love to continue something like this, absolutely. So if there's interest there, maybe reach out to Roxana, see if the library can support maybe ongoing poetry programming and let's let's keep the good times rolling, okay? Let's keep the good times rolling. All right, so I'm gonna share with you a, a quick poem. Um, when I'm not Professor Bridget, I am Poet Bridget out there in the world. Um, and so I'm gonna share just one poem with you because I think we only have time for about one poem. Uh, this is one that I wrote, I was asked by the publishers of the literary magazine Sin Cesar, formerly known as Dryland Magazine. Um, they are out of South Central, that's where I'm from. Um, and they were doing a memorial uh, issue for uh, the 30 year uh, anniversary of the civil unrest. And they asked me to write a reflective poem. I was uh, five 
when the civil unrest happened. And so I wrote it from the perspective of my five-year-old self. And so here yeah. is the poem. It's called, Remember the Fire This Time. This is an exclusive, this is the long version and not the one that's in the magazine. The one in the magazine is shorter and it's also translated into Spanish as well. Remember the fire this time. Mr. Lee owns the liquor store across the street. He isn't black like me, but Lee is also my father's name. And because of this, I think Mr. Lee is a nice man. And he is. Well, I put a dumb, dumb lollipop in my pocket before leaving the liquor store. And my mother walks me back over, makes me apologize to Mr. Lee. He lets me keep it, but I cry just the same. Latasha Harlins is 10 years older than me. Her killer gets 10 years and then doesn't. A bottle of orange juice costs $1.79 or a 15 year old's life. A dumb dumb can easily cost a kindergartner, but I don't know that yet. Mr. Lee's liquor store doesn't burn down, but on our big console TV, everything is on fire. Mr. Lee closes early on those nights. One night or maybe every night, I see the neighborhood butcher and his friends sitting at a card table in front of the store. The butcher and his friend look like my uncles. The butcher and his friend have shotguns in their laps. My father walks over with a fresh pot of coffee in one hand, his baseball bat in the other. Maybe the butcher and his friend are my family. After all, maybe Mr. Lee too. I am five years old and waiting for Soul Train, but the news is always on, is always breaking, is always busting a lip, is always fracturing a rib, is always blocking an eye, is always reporting live, is always reporting dead. The preachers on the news call for love and peace, but maybe they are missing something. I always shout love, peace, and soul. Sitting on my knees too close to the TV, eyes closed tight, just like I was taught to pray. And my children's Bible says on the seventh day, God rested and admired what he had done. Maybe the unrest lasted six days so we could gaze upon our creation and say it was good. Thank you all so much for coming out to us and joining us today for the past couple of weeks. We're taking your feedback. Uh, anything you want to share with us, please shoot an email. Roxana's dropped in the chat both of our email addresses. Let us know if you want to have more events like this. We would love to have more events like this with you outside of Poetry Month, especially to bring you poetry all the time. All right. Please keep your eyes peeled and locked to different things. You might get an email from us soon asking you for things. Thank you so much, Susan. Thank you, Lana. Thank you, Lori. Thank you, Sophia. Thank you, Alicia. Thank you, Noel. Thank you to everyone that joined us, everyone who's watching later. You missed it, child. You should have been here okay i don't tell you. you should be on time okay come on back all right and uh we will see y'all thank you thank yes you. thank you everybody thank take care you. bye bye y'all